So the time has come. I can finally tell you I saw a little bit of Call of Duty Vanguard. Today, we're going to break down a little bit of information regarding campaign, multiplayer, zombies, and Warzone. So without further ado, we're just going to jump into it. If you enjoy the video, make sure you drop a like down below, share it with some friends. And of course, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you guys are new, we're going to have so much stuff to talk about here in the coming days regarding Vanguard. So make sure you stick it here and don't miss a single thing. That said, let's jump into everything you should know. So I am so glad I can finally share all of this with you guys. Seeing the leaks come out recently in the past week or so here, not being able to really touch on it much well, given quite literally legal reasons with an NDA, it just worked out nicely that season five kind of provided a little cover, but it's nice to finally be able to share this information with you. Talk about what I learned here with Call of Duty Vanguard. Today, we're touching on campaign, multiplayer, zombies, war zone, and some engine tech, breaking down a little bit deeper into some other things here as time progresses and we go into the weekend. But all of those main topics will have time stamped down below on the scroll bar. So if anything interests you more than other items, feel free to check it out at your own leisure. Another sort of disclaimer here, a lot of this will be more so relating to the information gameplay. I'm not really sure what will be in here just yet. During our briefing, we weren't able to record, so I can't share anything that I saw with you explicitly. The trailer is probably out by now here via the live event within Warzone, so you can check that out for sure. But that probably won't be included in here because as of the time of recording this early, I don't have access to that. But that said, a big thank you to Sledgehammer and Activision for extending an invite to hear about the game early. But that said, let's get into it. Let's start with the core vision of the game. That's what Sledgehammer started off this entire presentation by talking about, in which they talked firstly about how this is going to be international with multiple points of view. And that's something you can see by the sort of rise on all fronts that we've been teased for a couple of weeks now at this point. They stated it's also historically rooted, but more so inspired and not necessarily being tied down. And you can actually see that with the main narrative we'll talk about here in a second, in which it follows a fictional story of the original special forces joined together to crush Operation Phoenix, which Intel suggests is to thwart the Gestapo plans at the end of the war. They also stated this is going to be something with unified experiences across all modes and war zones. So kind of continuing on, it seems like how what we've seen in Modern Warfare to an extent where we saw that cross-platform progression, but more so relevant to the same mechanics here, more so in Black Ops Cold War, where you could take things from different elements of the game and transfer them over one-to-one. -one. So like weapon progression and multiplayer, you then come over to zombies and it would be the same level you left off with multiplayer. How you could take it then from zombies zombies weapon level progression to war zone and so on and so forth. You see where that's going with that same sort of unified experience. But talking about the campaign in particular, setting up the narrative a little bit here with this, we see that this is set on multiple fronts. As again, those teasers suggested you're rising through locations in Europe, like France and Germany, you'll see North Africa and a bit into the Soviet Union, like Stalingrad and places in the Pacific, like Midway. Their focus was this was the sort of birth of the special forces here. You following task force Vanguard, your main objective is to take down the main bad guy, Heinrich Freisinger, the director of the Gestapo, who's loosely based on Heinrich Moeller. That's one cool thing that we'll talk about when we get to our main characters here is that the majority of characters in this story are based upon real people that have real history connected to World War II. But the events of the campaign will look to take place at the end of the war where the Soviets have the Germans surrounded. So during this fictional story, it follows the idea of the successors to Hitler who are trying to figure out who will rise to take his place and can they get the Nazi ideology and ranks smuggled out of the country before the entire collapse of the Reich? So that is where Project Phoenix comes into play, where allied leadership believes this is what the Nazis will be sneaking out, manpower and ideology trying to get out of Germany. So that's where Task Force Vanguard comes into play to identify and stop Project Phoenix. Vanguard is made up of Sergeant Arthur Kingsley of the British 9th Parachute Battalion, taking inspiration from Sidney Cornell, Lieutenant Polina Petrova of the 138th Rifle Division, of the Soviet Red Army, taken inspiration from Lyudmila Pavlichenko, also seen in the War Zone Easter Egg cutscene, if you want to call it that, Captain Wade Jackson of the U.S. Scouting Squadron 6, taken inspiration from Vernon Mike Michael, and Second Lieutenant Lucas Riggs of the Australian 20th Battalion, who takes inspiration from Charles Upham. We learned about how one of the first missions here that we experience actually is relating around their capture and then put into the prisons in Germany here and their sort of escape. But we also ended up seeing a full campaign mission almost in its entirety, where it's the night before D-Day, British paratroopers are trying to land behind enemy lines through 
disrupt and cause chaos, while then the Allies will then storm the beaches of Normandy. But those landings don't quite go as expected. There's a lot of casualties, a lot of planes shot down, and your character, Arthur Kingsley, is that one that is falling out of the sky here. His parachute burns up as he's watching his fellow soldiers burning up and falling to their death. He narrowly escapes death himself by pulling his reserve parachute and falling into a little bit of a lake, climbing out, and then trying to sneak around again behind enemy lines. The entire thing is a seeming stealth mission that is incredibly tense, but when I looked at this and I saw this, the big thing that really struck me was, one, it's the Modern Warfare engine. We'll talk about that in a little bit in more detail, but the game looks beautiful. I thought the Modern Warfare engine looked really good to begin with, but this looks to take it to the next level. They talked about upgrading some of the tech here with the engine, and I think that is absolutely something that is noticeable when you see this for yourself. It wasn't any pre-rendered cinematic or anything like that. It was actually playing right there on, I think it was a PlayStation 5, but it looked incredible. Now, again, unfortunately, I don't have any footage that I can share with you of that, but that'll likely come out very soon here. We ended up seeing things like this happen last year where that ended up being debuted at Gamescom, so it wouldn't be surprising if we see it in the next couple of weeks, but I personally thought it looked pretty good. As for the multiplayer, moving on over into this side of things here, this is where it probably starts to get really interesting for people, and where I'm actually really excited for what we see by comparison to Modern Warfare and Black Ops Cold War's launches. This game, as detailed by Greg Reisdorf over at Sledgehammer is going to launch with 20 plus maps at launch. For those of you guys that remembered, we had like, what, nine with Black Ops Cold War? So this is going to be insane. And the beautiful part is that the majority of these are 6v6 supported maps, 16 of them in fact, all spanning across the Western Front, Eastern Front, North Africa, and the Pacific. So there's gonna be a lot of different range of locale and environments that you can play around with, and I'm incredibly excited for that. They also said that there's going to be four 2v2 maps at launch, with again, likely more coming throughout the way. Although they did say that they're going to be supporting another new mode as well with those same maps. And we'll come back to that in a second. I kind of think I know what this is. They didn't really ever touch on it too much, but then they transitioned into talking about some the design philosophy here with this, where they said they want to take tactical approach to the design. Gunsmith does return, which is of course very nice. I like the customization Gunsmith offers, but it's also a no-brainer if we're integrating it into Warzone. That's got to kind of be one-to-one -one here, the way that that works out. But there's going to be new custom ballistics and ammo types that they mentioned, a function where you can place weapons on surfaces and kind of slide in and out of those as well. But also one interesting one that I'm a little curious to see how this works. I can't really say I like it or hate it just yet because obviously haven't had our hands on time with it, but over the head firing where it's not going to be as accurate, but it can kind of give you suppressing fire, which is certainly interesting. They also mentioned reactive gameplay experiences where the world objects were destructible in some capacity here, where you can do things like shoot through boards and walls to create new lines of sight and pathing. Now, the way this is described, it kind of seems like it's something that follows Rainbow Six Siege, where it's not going to be true levolution of battlefield or anything like that, where skyscrapers are falling and everything, but instead it's just going to open up different lanes and avenues that you can take or potentially just peek through to take out an enemy. A little bit more tactical in that approach as well. They're claiming to introduce new ways to play in which combat Combat pacing was the big one here with this, where in your preferences for your filters, you can select tactical, standard, or blitz. Standard is your regular gameplay experience. Tactical increases time of combat where every bullet matters, and as described by Greg Rasdorf himself, is an incredibly sweaty gameplay experience. Then blitz is as many players put into a map as possible to create high action experiences that are just pure chaos. Now, I'm gonna be totally honest with you here. This was one of those things that was described in a way that was kind of ambiguous. It wasn't necessarily something that was 100% straightforward. It seems like you're equivalent to core, hardcore, and then things like ground war with tactical being sweaty, every gunfight matters, being that kind of hardcore engagement. Blitz being as many players in one map as possible, kind of being that ground war style of gameplay. But again, it wasn't really explicitly stated. The final thing they closed out the multiplayer side of discussion here with was something of a brand new mode called Channel. Champion Hill. This being a mix of battle royale, gunfight, and an evolving gameplay of weapons and progression. Now, there's a little bit of information here that they gave us, but that stuff is off the record. Still under NDA, so stay tuned for more. We may be able to share more of that soon, but right now, that's all there is that can be publicly discussed. As for zombies jumping over into this, this will be something that's really interesting because Treyarch is leading the development here on this. It's a first franchise crossover type of thing here that's happening, and 
Very curious to see what that leads to. This is going to tell the prologue of the Cold War zombie storyline, so before Diamashina. And if you remember that initial intro cutscene that we ended up getting way back now at this point, that's quite literally from World War II, so this is a perfect tie-in in all honesty. So I'm excited to see where this goes from here, and of course to see Treyarch continue that storyline in a sort of prologue fashion. And not to mention, I really enjoyed Zombies this year. I think they did a phenomenal job at keeping the hardcore players and those that have been around for a long time engaged in new features tech and all, while also making it very easy for new fans to pick up and enjoy. It's not something that you're stuck behind this barrier of entry if you need to know this piece of lore, that Easter egg, and things like that. It's pretty straightforward, and I really enjoyed that. Also, I really hope this means we get more mastery camos for zombies, and hopefully this time in Warzone. And speaking of Warzone, we didn't get too much in terms of intel on many things in terms of the quantity of things we learned about, but the information that we did get is absolutely massive. Number one, Raven is still leading development. Number two, there is a brand new Warzone map coming later this year. And by brand new, it sure sounds like we're not going to have Verdansk reskinned or anything like that, but instead a brand new experience, a brand new map. They didn't offer up any details on location, on sizing or anything like that, but the prospect and idea of a brand new Warzone map definitely gets me excited here at this. The beautiful thing, though, is they also mentioned a new anti-cheat system that is coming day one with Vanguard, and can I get an amen for that, man? You have no idea how hard that was to keep my mouth shut on that stuff because that was just, that was pain. I wanted to scream it from the rooftops, man. Now, I will say that right now that brand new Warzone map was stated as coming later this year. So that doesn't seem like it's going to be a day one thing here at this, but instead later this calendar year. So up until December 31st, if I were to guess, we kind of saw this happen with Rebirth Island and Black Ops Cold War. So maybe season one here at that. But we also ended up seeing on the anti-cheat discussion as well that that's day one of the Warzone experience. So that could be something that comes if there's integration at launch, or again, it might be slightly delayed until when we get that new map, if that's when the integration happens. We don't quite know just yet what that is. There wasn't expanded upon at all. So just keep an open mind, but know that those are coming eventually. Now, they did mention also that the tech and engine of Warzone are one and the same with Vanguard. So it is going to be seamless integration. And they did confirm that that meta Metaverse connecting the universes of COD, Vanguard, Cold War, and Modern Warfare and beyond are all going to be there as well. And they also stated a massive calendar of post-launch content is in the pipeline for Warzone and Vanguard. Now, the final thing they really talked about was the core tech here in this, in which, again, it is on Infinity Ward's core engine, integrated and improved upon, though, to offer more photorealistic and visual fidelity under optimized performance, which is incredible, I think. I love the way that Modern Warfare looked in its campaign, how it played at high res, and I'm all for even making that better. So based off of our pre-briefing here, it seems like Vanguard and Warzone have a lot of goodies in the pipeline. I'm excited to just get my hands on now at this point, whenever that may be, to see how it feels. It's one thing to talk about all these cool things and get excited about that, but to see how it actually plays in our hands as players, that's an entirely different story sometimes. So that's where we're at here at this, and that is everything that I learned about within this reveal info and pre-briefing for Vanguard. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. What are you guys thinking so far of what you've heard with Vanguard out of this video. Like it, dislike it, looking forward to it, maybe not so much, whatever the case may be, feel free to let me know your thoughts down below. As well, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below, and of course, if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Vanguard, Warzone, anything COD related. We still have so much stuff to talk about here regarding Vanguard, so stick it here on the channel if you guys are interested. If you also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected outside of YouTube, practice on both those. So if you guys want to check my conversation, ask me a question, whatever the case may be, that link is down there in the description below. That's it. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.